Hi all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share a story with you that will not only leave you shaking your head, but also checking every baby stroller you pass by from now on. It's a story about a woman who makes me shudder to even refer to her as a mother, who was sentenced to only 20 years in prison on December 14th of 2020 by a jury in Galveston, Texas, in conjunction with the death of her one-year-old daughter, Hazana Anderson, in 2018. Maybe you remember hearing about it? I never did. And after you listen to this video, you'll wish you didn't either. But it happened. It was horrific. And beautiful little one-year-old Hazana Anderson deserves to have her story told. She also deserved justice in this case, after the horrific abuse she suffered at the hands of her piece-of-shit egg donor and her evil boyfriend, which is going to be excruciating to hear, so consider yourself warned in case you want to click off before I put that into your head. But in my opinion, justice didn't even come close to getting served in this case, and after I tell you little Hazana's story, I'm sure you'll agree. So, you might want to get a nice tall cold drink, because I'm about to make your blood boil or at least a good stiff drink, you're going to need it. Trust me, I have mine ready for when this video's done. All right, let's do it. On October 28th of 2018, police in College Station, Texas, received a frantic 911 call from Tiandra Kristen claiming that her daughter, Hasana Anderson, went missing at Gabbard Park. Now, some news reports say she was one-year-old when she went missing, and some say she was two. Not that it really matters, but I like to try to be as accurate as possible when I share case information with you. Kristen claimed that she lost track of her daughter in the park because she believed she climbed out of her stroller and may have ended up in a body of water there. According to police, they put the word out that Hazana went missing, and over 160 people showed up to the park to help search for her. Kristen told police she left little Hazana in her stroller about 30 yards away from the water and went to go get her bottle from her car, and when she returned, Hazana was gone. She gave a description of Hazana and what she was wearing when she went missing to first responders, and the search and rescue went underway. And this is where things take a dark turn. Police said that during their search, they found a black garbage bag containing child's clothing matching the description of the clothing Hazana's mother said she was wearing, which was very specific. Purple beanie, a black long-sleeved shirt with gold writing that says Girl Squad, an olive green jacket with a hood, cream-colored ruffled pants, pink socks, and dark pink Adidas sneakers. But, they didn't just find the clothes. They found a life-size child doll dressed in them. The bag was found in a trash can, not far from where Hazana's mother's car was parked. Finding this discovery strange, police asked Kristen about it. Of course she claimed that she recognized the clothing, but she had no idea where the doll came from. Police said the entire park was searched, including the pond in nearby roads, but there was no sign of Hazana anywhere. After searching all day, police expanded the search to nearby homes, using canine units to assist. But still no sign of little Hazana. At this point, I'm assuming the police weren't buying Kristen's story, because they put out a request seeking the public's assistance with the investigation asking anyone who knew anything about Hazana's whereabouts or recent travels to contact them. So, a couple of Kristen's friends did, telling them that she had recently visited her boyfriend in Houston with Hazana. When police asked if they'd seen Hazana since they returned from their trip, the friends said they caught glimpses of her here and there in her stroller, but that was it. So, they decided to investigate further. They obtained surveillance footage from a trip Kristen told them she made to Walmart with Azana since she returned from their trip, which appeared to show Kristen pushing a baby stroller 
with a small child inside. But something about that footage tipped them off, and they started unraveling Kristen's story. Apparently, they suspected that the child in the stroller at Walmart and the child Kristen's friends thought they saw glimpses of was the life-size baby doll they found in the trash bag dressed in Hazana's clothing, not Hazana. So the following day, Kristen was arrested and charged with filing a false police report and endangering a child with criminal negligence. Hazana's biological father, Bodrick Anderson, said he helped with the search in the park and canvassed homes around the park to ask if anyone saw Hazana that day. But, even though his search turned up nothing, he remained positive that his little girl would be found. He told news reporters that he was estranged from Hazana's mother and that he hadn't seen little Hazana in months because they didn't have a custody agreement between them. But he said he didn't feel that Kristen did anything to Hazana, and he felt she just left her in someone's care. On the second day of searching, after Kristen's arrest, police say they had divers search Country Club Lake, located in a park close to where Kristen and Hazana lived. Although police admitted they had no reason to believe they'd find Hazana there, they wanted to search it anyway, just to be sure. While police were searching the lake, Hazana's bio dad said he went to see Kristen in jail to talk to her about the whereabouts of their daughter, but she refused to see him. Things were not looking good at this point. Police said even though Kristen gave them no indication that Hazana had been harmed in any way, they understood that the more the time passed, the chances of them finding Hazana alive was diminishing. But they said they had nothing to prove that she wasn't alive, so they kept searching. After the fourth day of searching and turning up nothing, police went back to Kristen and interrogated her. And this is where it really starts to get ugly. Police said Kristen confessed that she created and carried the doll around after returning from her trip to Houston, pretending it was her baby. She said she did it because Hazana had actually died in a hotel room they were staying in with her boyfriend in Houston after she and her boyfriend abused her. Now, I'm going to read the probable cause affidavit because I want the world to know what this bitch did to her baby and what she allowed her piece of shit boyfriend to do to her. So people know what monsters they are. So you may want to skip the next couple minutes if you don't want to hear it because it isn't pretty. Why is it important to me to let the world know? Because even though she was sentenced to only 20 years for what I'm about to tell you and causing the death of a child she was privileged to have, she will be eligible for parole in just five short years. How? I'll explain that later in this video. Right now, I just want to make sure that if she's freed after only five short years, that she never, ever gets one day of peace until the day she takes her last breath. According to Kristen's confession to police and the probable cause affidavit, Kristen claimed that on October 19th of 2018, nine days before she even bothered to report her baby girl missing, Kristen's boyfriend, Kenny Hewitt, left the hotel she was staying at with him with little Hazana to go get food. She said when he returned 30 minutes later, Hazana was crying. So the bastard started hitting her with a belt and told Kristen to do the same. So she did. But she told police he didn't think she was hitting Hazana hard enough. So he resumed beating her himself. Then she said she noticed her precious baby daughter slipping in and out of consciousness. Let me ask you something. How long would you have to beat a child to watch them slip in and out of consciousness? She didn't say she lost consciousness. She said she slipped in and out. And while she watched her helpless little baby being beaten in and out of consciousness, she never intervened. 
to stop him. When she finally lost consciousness and didn't regain it, the two panicked and tried placing her in a bathtub full of water, hoping to revive her. You know, not because they gave two shits about her life or what they had just done to her, but because they didn't want to get in trouble for brutally beating a two-year-old to death. Then she told police that when she lifted little Hazana's lifeless body out of the tub, she realized why Hazana was crying when she returned with her boyfriend. Because she had been abused in other ways, which I can't even bring myself to say. So in their desperate attempt to warm her little body, they used a hair dryer on her. But she told police it didn't work. It only burned her skin. According to the affidavit, Hazana died that night, and her wonderful mother hid her dead body in a plastic bag and placed her in the back seat of her car, where she remained for three days while they decided how to dispose of her. Geez, I wonder what they did together for those three days. Hung out, maybe watched some movies, got some takeout, hit a bar or two, you know. Enjoyed their time together, I'm sure. I wonder if getting a life-size doll and dressing it up like her kid was her idea, or if they both came up with it. Since it seemed to be such a team effort and all, it just wouldn't seem right not to give her boyfriend credit where credit is due. So after three carefree days of enjoying life without a small child in tow, they decided to wrap the bag she was in with a rope, affix a heavy rock to it, and throw her into Moses Lake in Texas City, where dive teams discovered her tiny body. Now, if your blood isn't already boiling, it's going too soon. So you may want to get that cold drink ready now. And you may want to add a few extra ice cubes, or just fill a bucket, or get a truckload, whichever is most convenient. After little Hosanna's body was recovered from the lake, an autopsy was performed to determine her cause of death, and Kristen and Hewitt were both arrested and each charged with one count of tampering with a human corpse. I'll wait. Ah, you got it. I knew you would. Y'all are too smart. You never let me down. No, as a matter of fact, I did not forget the murder charge for either one of them. Because, see, the medical examiner who performed the autopsy couldn't determine a cause of death that would lead to homicide charges. So, apparently, in Galveston County, you can confess to police that you brutally beat a small child until they lose consciousness, admit that you couldn't revive them, put them in the back seat of your car for days, tie them up, and weigh them down, and toss them into a large body of water. Then fabricate a story about them wandering off and going missing nine days later, so you can waste police resources for four days or more until they get sick of your shit. And if the medical examiner can't prove that the damage you inflicted on the child caused the child's death, you get away with murder. Yes, you do. Remember, you heard it here first. And not only do you get away with murder, but the medical examiner may even testify on your behalf. Like the medical examiner did at Kristen's trial, when she testified that the abuse that Kristen confessed she and her boyfriend inflicted on little Hazana wouldn't have been enough to cause her death. Therefore, she was unable to declare Hazana's death a homicide. So, without proof that a homicide was committed, no murder charges could be sought for either defendant. So the most the prosecution felt they could charge them with was tampering with a human corpse. Oddly enough, they can't figure out how she became a human corpse, even though she was brutally beaten by two adults until she lost consciousness and she never regained consciousness, so they threw her in a lake. So even if she was unconscious for days, 
she would have drowned in the water. But, you know, they weren't sure that was how she died, so it's better to be safe than sorry, I guess, huh? Hewitt pled guilty to the joke of a charge in 2019 and was also sentenced to 20 years in prison. But apparently tampering with a human corpse in Galveston County doesn't get you much more than a slap on the wrist, because he'll already be eligible for parole in February of 2021. And really, because I've made a much bigger deal of all this than it actually is, Hazana's mother's original bond of $500,000 was reduced, and she was released from jail on a $100,000 bond while awaiting her joke of a trial. Because it wasn't like she was a killer or anything. So, you know, innocent until proven guilty and all. And like I said earlier, she was sentenced to a pathetic 20 years in prison, but she will be eligible for parole in five. So precious little Hazana died a horrific death but nobody, nobody was charged with her murder. No serious punishment, no justice for that precious little angel. Evil wins. Shocker. What happened to Don't Mess With Texas? What a joke. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate your time, and I'll see you on my next video. <laughs>